Make sure you have your guided notes out. Uh, we will be finishing the periodic table notes today. Uh, if you remember the last time we did notes, we discussed both groups and periods. And then we uh, color coded a periodic table. And so this was able to show you where metals, nonmetals, and metalloids are located. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the physical and chemical properties of uh, metals, nonmetals, and the metalloids. Let's go ahead and start with properties of metals. Um, looking at your periodic table, they are going to be found left of the stair step line. Um, you should have also colored these yellow when we color coded the periodic table. Um, let's go ahead and start with the physical properties first. Um, they are going to be shiny or what we call luster. Um, so if it has luster, that means it's going to have some kind of shininess to it. Um, if you think about different metals you have seen, you probably remember that they had some kind of shininess to them or what we would call luster. Um, they are also going to be good conductors of both heat and electricity. Uh, if you think back to when we talked about physical properties, we said that metals were good conductors. Um, I gave the example of if you held a metal spoon into a flame, over time that heat is going to creep up that metal spoon and touch your fingers or your hand. Um, and that's just showing that the heat conducts or moves up that spoon. Um, the same thing is going to happen with electricity. If you have a piece of metal, it's going to allow that electricity to easily flow through that material. So we're going to say that metals are good conductors. Next, uh, they are going to have a high density. If you remember, density is going to be a ratio of mass to volume. So if you have a high density, that means you're going to have a lot of mass um, compared to its volume. So it's kind of a a lot of mass compacted into a smaller amount of volume. Um, if you try to pick up a metal, you're going to have that heavy feel to it. And once again, that's because it has a high density. Uh, metals are also going to have a high melting point. I have a couple of examples for you. One of them is that um, aluminum is going to have a melting point of about 1,218 degrees Fahrenheit. And then silver is going to melt at a temperature of 1,762 degrees Fahrenheit. If you think of a common material, let's think water, um, it is going to stay ice or be a solid up until 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and after that, it's going to start to melt. So um, common, a common object that we think of as ice melting is relatively low at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and metals are going to be much higher um, into the thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. Um, lastly, metals are going to be both ductile and malleable. And what this means is you're going to be able to kind of bend it, pull it, um, hammer on it, and it's not going to break. Um, and so even though they are a set, uh, solid, you are going to be able to kind of twist it, pull it. Um, you're going to kind of be able to mold it into something without it breaking. Um, next, let's go ahead and talk about the chemical properties of metals. First, they are going to lose their electrons easily. Um, we won't talk about this a lot now, but when we get into ions and bonding, um, we'll talk more about what it means to lose electrons. Um, but what's going to happen is that when we look at metals, they're going to want to give away their electrons. Um, and then last chemical property is that they are going to, metals will corrode easily. And so if you think about a piece of metal you've seen that had rust on it, um, that's showing that it's actually being worn away, that it's corroding. Um, let's move on to your properties of your nonmetals. Um, these are going to be found to the right of the stair step line. Um, if you look at your color coded periodic table, you should have colored these orange. Um, you're also going to notice that these properties are going to be opposite of those of metal. Um, so the first physical property we'll talk about is that they do not have luster. They're not going to be shiny. Um, this means they're going to have kind of this dull appearance. So you're not going to see it shine. Um, they are also not going to be good conductors of heat and electricity. So if you were to put um, a different material into a flame that is not a good conductor, that heat's not going to creep up. Same thing with electricity. It's going to be hard for electricity to flow through a non-metal. Um, next, they are going to have um, a brittle uh, physical property, which means that it's going to break easily. This is kind of what we think about when we think of solids, is if you try to bend it, it's going to break. Um, so you're not going to be able to hammer it. You're not going to be able to pull it. Um, it would break before um, it could mold. Um, that also means it's not going to be ductile or malleable. Um, next, we're going to talk about its density. 
Nonmetals are going to have a lower density than metals. Um, so once again, remember, this means that it's going to have um, less mass comp uh, with its volume. So it's not going to be as packed tightly as a metal. Um, and then lastly, let's go ahead and look at the melting point of nonmetals. These are going to have a lower melting point. Um, and so what this means is that it will be able to melt at a lower temperature. Um, so chemical properties of nonmetals. Um, we're really only going to look at one of these for nonmetals. And once again, we're mostly going to focus on the gaining and sharing of electrons when we talk about ions and bonding. But I do want you to know that nonmetals are going to want to take or, or gain or share these electrons. So metals gave them away. Uh, nonmetals are going to take them. The last one we're going to talk about is metalloids. Um, and these are going to be found right at that zigzag or that stair step line. Um, and if you look at your color coded periodic table, you should have colored those purple. Um, and what you're going to find is that these are going to have both properties of metals and nonmetals. Um, they're mostly going to be solid. Um, they could be shiny like a metal, or they could be dull like a nonmetal. Um, they are going to be ductile, they're going to be malleable. Um, they can conduct heat and electricity better than nonmetals, but not as well as metals. Um, so we're going to kind of call these your in-between elements. Um, and we're mostly going to focus on both your metals and your nonmetals, but you do need to know these basic properties of your metalloids.